coherence and cohesion. Do you know the difference between these two words? Stick around! Hello dear learners, this is Renette from Teaching Learning English. Welcome back to our reading and writing subject. How is your writing activity? I hope it is already organized after learning the lessons on the patterns of our organization and some useful tips on how to have a smooth writing. Today, we are going to discuss two important words in writing. They are cohesion and coherence. What's the difference between these two words? Is it possible that your writing is coherent but not cohesive? Cohesive but not coherent? Mm, that's a nice thought. First, let's get to know the objectives of our lesson. At the end of our lesson, you are expected to identify the difference between cohesion and coherence, explore a cohesive and coherent composition, and write a coherent composition. Are you ready? I have noticed lately that one of our tiles inside my room has a noisy sound every time I step on it. You see, the cement and tiles are not fully attached. Well, I know the tile has a perfect size, but it is not fully attached. But uh, when a tile is attached or cemented properly, I guess it becomes strong, strong enough that it can still be used for years. This is the best analogy for cohesion. Cohesion is defined as the act of forming a whole unit. It is effectively a subset of coherence. It is focused on the grammatical aspect of writing, and it also refers to the degree which sentences are connected so that the flow of ideas is easy to follow, meaning it is part of coherence. When one sentence is connected properly to the next sentence, then it becomes a perfect paragraph. What is then a coherence? Coherence refers to the quality of being logical, consistent, and, of course, able to be understood. It includes rhetorical aspects of writing which include developing and supporting your argument, synthesizing and integrating reading, organizing and clarifying ideas. So, if we go back to the analogy, coherence is the, the building while cement and tiles are just parts of a, a building structure. The tiles and cement or anything that is attached to the tiles can be put together to create a structure. But it is only when they are laid together properly that they form a building. In other words, a text will be cohesive if cohesive ties are used. However, it will only be coherent if the cohesive ties are used appropriately to create meaning. Sounds difficult to understand? Look at this example. The sentence, I had the most beautiful experience when I went to the zoo. I saw different kinds of birds, but it was my first time to see a carabao flying. Now, is it cohesive? Mm, I would say yes, grammatically correct. There is a, a signal word sentence structure okay quite good so i would say it is cohesive so it follows cohesion is the text coherent definitely not because it is illogical because a carabao doesn't fly did you get what i mean in general you can have cohesion without coherence but you cannot have coherence without cohesion since we cannot achieve coherence without cohesion, we will discuss first how to write a cohesive paragraph or composition. How do you know if your writing is cohesive? Well, let's first define cohesion. It is defined as the set of resources for constructing relations in discourse which transcend grammatical structure. That's according to Holiday in 1994. According to the writers Halliday and Hassan, there are six main ways that 
cohesion is created in a text. These are called reference, substitution, ellipsis, lexical chains, cohesive nouns, and conjunctions. Are the words sound familiar to you? If you don't know how to use these six words in your text structure, then you can't achieve a cohesive text. Let's discuss them one by one. On my first list is reference. When you say reference, it includes personal pronouns, demonstratives, comparatives, definite article which is the that is a definite article many times we are not conscious or we are not keen on using reference not only do we need to know what kind of reference is involved but we also need to know their reference example what the reference refers to and where the original referent can be found in the common text in the text most common example is like this for example i have collected calathea calathea plants i don't know how to pronounce it and i love it is this sentence right or wrong mm, you guess it is wrong because the word it should have been them because it refers to plants you need to review your grammar particularly on personal pronouns, demonstratives, comparatives, or even definite articles. Let's have one example. Let's read this. Death penalty is a serious issue that has not been resolved for quite a long time. Arguments for and against it have been discussed fully. Those who favor the death penalty argue that the only way to stop crime is to eliminate the criminal. Those opposing it to say that putting a criminal to death denies the chance to repent and mend his ways. But are criminals, especially the deep-eyed ones, capable of repentance? So that referred to death penalty. Those refers to people. Okay, the next is substitution. It uses a word or phrase to replace a word or phrase used earlier. Let's take a look at the previous paragraph. Do you think this paragraph has a substitution? I can find one. This is the deep-eyed ones. Instead of saying deep-eyed criminals, so the criminals is substituted to ones. That is an example. The third is ellipsis. Ellipsis is omitting words because it is already understood in the context. Example, I can play basketball and he can too. You don't say, I can play basketball and he can play basketball too. Even if you omit the word basketball, it is already understood. All right? The fourth is lexical chain. From the word chain, one word is related to another. It is a sequence of related words in writing. In this example, what are related words from this paragraph? F penalty, serious, issue, crime, death, deep-eyed, or criminal. These are related words. The fifth one is cohesive noun or nouns. They are a kind of lexical reference. They can summarize many words or can be used to signal what is to come or can refer back. Examples or examples such as two cars collided on the flyover. However, nobody was hurt in the accident. The word accident summarizes the whole idea of the text. When you say the accident mentioned above, referring back to the accident. And the last one is conjunction. What are some examples such as firstly, next, moreover, however, but, and many more. So in this paragraph, where is the conjunction here? Hmm, the word but, okay? That is an example of conjunction. So these are the six ways to make your text cohesive. Now, let's proceed to coherence. We know that coherence is about creating texts that make sense and are logical. 
We often tell to people, hey, you are nonsense. That means your idea is incoherent. Coherence comes from making logical connections between ideas in each part of the text and the context. Remember that if the text makes sense, this helps stick together and if a text sticks together, it can help to make sense. How can you achieve a coherent text? Be sure to clarify the meaning, indicate a change of topic, the headings, the subheadings, the layout, the formatting. If you have a good layout, it can make the information easier to find, more logical in its sequencing, logical ordering. It means being order or sequence that makes sense to the reader. Compare this to examples. I did some shopping, but before that, I went to the movies. The second is First, I went to the movies, then I did my shopping, and after that, I went home. The first sentence lacks order of sequence of events. Part of writing a coherent text is it will make readers infer. How do you infer? I have another example. My friend died. I will see her tomorrow. Is this coherent? Well, it contains cohesive element but it is not pragmatically appropriate. Most likely the word see here is seeing her remains, her, her dead body. It may sound understood, but it is still not appropriate. You have to consider the context of the text. Let's have another example. I'll give you 10 seconds to read. You may stop this video if you need more time. Well, both paragraphs have the same information. But paragraph 2 is easier to understand because it contains transition signals. Each signal has a signal meaning. The flow of thought is logical. Okay? To summarize, coherence can be achieved through logical ordering of ideas, formatting clear communicative stages, eliminating ambiguity, maintaining consistency in lexis and syntax. Mm, don't forget the cohesive devices. Cohesion is where you can see connections, while coherence is where you infer connections. Coherence is a feature of cohesive texts, but texts can be cohesive without being coherent. If you have some comments and clarifications, feel free to comment below. Happy learning everyone! See you!